Hi everyone, my name is Lucas Sala, and today I'll be talking about um, how Citibank reacted to Ukraine and Russia's conflict. Um, well, first of all, I'm going to be talking about um, how big Citibank is. Um, Citibank is one of the three major banks in the U.S. and in the whole world in general. Um, here are some screenshots of of the revenues. We can compare Citi with Bank of America and J.P. Morgan Chase, which are the ones that are um, above Citi um, in terms of revenues. Uh, we can see how the total revenue of 2023 um, was seven, seventy-eight million dollars and a half, almost, and this is uh, basically half of what J.P. Morgan was. Um, however, it's one of the biggest bank in the U.S. Um, even though they don't have that, that much revenue as J.P. Morgan does, um, if if Citibank uh, goes bankrupt, it will be pretty um, notable in the world. Um, Apart from these, they also have 659 branches in the whole world. Um, they have $1.6 trillion in assets as well. Uh, some interesting facts that I found about Citi <clears throat> is that they were the first uh, company that launched the ADMs, and they also launched the 24 hours PC banking, the first one, uh, which is what we use, what we use um, nowadays uh, for our daily day-to-day -day transactions. In the next slide, I'll be talking about the impact <clears throat> um, of Ukrainian city. Uh, this is basically um, their share price um, um, chart. Here we can see um, how city went from uh, costing 60 bucks per share. This was in 2022, right here you can see it. And you can see how it was in 60 bucks almost. And it went all the way down to 37.5. This is almost a 50% um, um, decrease. Uh, I'm taking these two prices into account because this is in the first months of 2022 and the war started in February. So uh, that's why I took that as a reference. And this was the all time low uh, while the war was happening or is happening. Um, so they basically went from almost 60 bucks to 37.5. Um, this was basically because not all or not most of them, but many of their offices were located in Russia. Uh, so this led, the, I'll be talking about that in the next slices, but this basically led, uh, this conflict led um, city to close all their offices in Russia which led also to a drastic decrease in their share price. Apart from this, though, um, we can also see how, right here, um, how the big market makers that city had sold many of their positions, making the share value go down as well. And it was also a pretty big fear in the market because of the Russian Ukraine conflict. It was the main reasons why. Um, the share price of, of City went all the way down, or not all the way down, but went down f like uh, for a 50%. Uh, I've also another thing to talk about the impact of them, which is the impact uh, in, the EP, in the EPS and the financial actions that Citibank uh, had during the war. Uh, we can see here how the EPS, which is the earnings per share, of city uh, went all the way down in 2021 from 10 and 0.80 bucks to 407 um, in, and in between the war the war happened obviously um, and the durated earnings per share as well went all the way down to four uh, which is more than 50 percent drop um, in the APS uh, this is basically because what they did was a reverse stock split um, a reverse stock split is basically when a company um, um, reduces the amount of shares that they have in the market, reduces the amount of shares floating in the market, and it increases the price of the share. This is usually a bad sign because uh, they're basically taking money out of the of the public and they want to retain their earnings in, in, in doing this. And, Obviously, in this case, 
this was because of the war of Ukraine and Russia. Uh, but for example, it's, not, it's a pretty bad sign. It's not like it's not as good sign as a stock split because a stock split is right. The opposite thing is when um, a company increases the number of shares and decreases um, the price of the company, which leads to the consumers or the investors to buy more. And by doing this, they give more money to Citibank and and they are more. But when you, you when you do a reverse stock split, it's a pretty bad thing for a pretty bad sign for the company, and this is usually what happens uh, during a macroeconomic event like a war or or a COVID nineteen or something like that. Um, so yeah, then uh, what actions did Citi um, take in order to kind of uh, make this problem or macroeconomic problem um, be less um, harmful for them? So they, ba they basically started closing all their offices in Russia. This was basically because the U.S., which is um, where, the, where most headquarters of Syria are, um, was not in favor of Russia's conflict. So in order for them to uh, show Russia that they were against, that, against the fight of the conflict of, or, of the war, uh, they closed all their offices there. Uh, this was a pretty quick thing that they did. They only lasted from August to October. When October uh, ended, all their offices were closed already. Um, they also made sure that their employees had some kind of money during the war. Um, this is a pretty good sign of how city treats their customers. Um, however, even though these that I mentioned, in these two points that I mentioned before, uh, were done pretty quick, pretty quickly. Uh, it actually made them lose a lot of money. Um, also, they also had to quickly sell um, their Russian consumers, sorry, sorry the Russian customers' uh, portfolios, and pretty in a pretty um, a quick pace. Uh, this led them to not only lose a lot of money, but also uh, give them a good price that city was not interested in giving them. Um, um, and it actually just led them to uh, lose a lot of money. Um, they also par participated in charitable causes and they donated more, th more than $1.5 million to charity. Um, I just wanted to mention that they kind of did something like this when COVID happened. Um, they basically made uh, a 900 bed hospital for COVID from people that were um, um, suffering from COVID. So this is actually a pretty, these are actually two macroeconomic events that happened um, in the last years. And we can see how C has reacted to them in a pretty good, um, in a pretty good um, way, in my opinion. Uh, we can see how their, the well-being of their employees as well as the entire world is a priority for them. And also, I also wanted to comment some thoughts that I had. Uh, first of all, the remarkable employee care that they had uh, during these two macroeconomic events. Um, also, in my opinion, they will probably not open offices back in Russia until the conflict is over. Or maybe they just don't open them anymore because, uh, you know, when these things happen, uh, you have to be pretty considerate of what you're doing. And I, I guess that uh, it will depend on how um, this conflict ends up. Uh, for them to maybe consider opening more offices in Russia. Um, in my opinion, they might have to open more offices in other places to at least break even um, what they've lost already, because this amount of money that they've, that they've um, lost with these actions right here was a pretty big thing. I mean, we can see how the share price went all the way down and the earnings per share went all, the, went all the way down as well. So um, kind of a solution that they could have in order for them not to lose that much money might be opening more offices. But again, this is just a um, hypothesis that I'm, that I'm throwing out because um, I don't really know what they're going to do. But I think that that might be a good solution. Um, also, it'll be hard to get all those sales back um, these sales that are, I'm, I'm talking about these sales, these um, portfolio sales that they did uh, pretty quickly. 
it'll be pretty hard. Um, so I would say that maybe they have they will have to wait at least two years to recover from this thing that has happened. And these serious losses, uh, what, I, what I wanted to mention here was what I've been telling you all the way all, since I started this slide. Uh, they just had, had so many losses um, that I actually think, I honestly think that City will um, uh, get all those losses back because they're a pretty big company. Um, I also respect the fact that uh, they consider the well-being of their employees. I think, in my opinion, that uh, making sure that their employees had some kind of money during the war is a pretty respectable thing. I personally respect respect that. Respect that. Um, and here in the next slide, you can see the references that I got from, which are these. I had the revenues and the earnings per share thing in Yahoo Finance. Um, I got the charts with the share price value during these two years from TradingView.com, and I also got the auction street during the war from my Google Doc, uh, which is what I what we did before this PowerPoint, and I hope you guys liked it.